At this point, I'm pretty sure that it's obvious to everybody that I like to do a lot of landscape paintings and I love painting landscapes. Therefore, a lot of people are asking me constantly uh, tutorials on how to do background paintings. And this is one of those things that is one of my pet peeves. And because it's my channel, I am going to talk about this. So let's get into it right now. Background paintings are a real thing. Background paintings exist. Backgrounds are, for example, in animations, when you look at the background, there's a background and it's kind of like a stage for the main characters to be in. Often in video games also, there's sometimes situations where the background is just background and for gameplay purposes, it's important for the concept artist to understand the difference between active and inactive elements and the visual methods used to highlight which is which so that the player doesn't get confused between the two. Visual noise can be detrimental to gameplay, so in those cases I would definitely call a background a background, because that's what it is. But in my paintings where I have landscape paintings, those are not background paintings, and I'm not gonna get mad when somebody says that my paintings are background paintings. I think it's fine, like you use terms however you wish, but if you want me to teach you landscape painting, we are going to have to get clear on the terminology, because it comes with a different mindset altogether, and if you don't take this mindset, there's no point in me like making art tutorials on how to paint trees or clouds, because if the core element from the landscape painting is missing, then I think it's just pointless. So that's why I think this is very, very extremely important to talk about. And if you're serious about painting landscapes, I think this is information that I recommend that you at least listen to. You don't have to paint landscapes the way that I do, but I think this is something that is common to a lot of art. If you go to an art gallery and then you see Monet's paintings, like for example his water lily paintings, which I love and my mother loved and I learned to love through her appreciation of those paintings, nobody would go into that gallery and call those paintings background paintings. Like we can probably all agree that this would be just insanity. But it doesn't mean that there's no mood and there is no characters in that painting. The character in a landscape painting can be several different things. It can be, for example, in a mountain, the mountain can be the painter or the viewer or how the viewer is supposed to feel like. Or the character might be the person that is looking at the landscape. Where you are positioning the camera in a landscape tells a lot about how you're supposed to look at and interact with the painting. It's already setting up clues on what kind of emotional state you are going for. A landscape painting that is showing mostly sky gives a completely different vibe than a landscape painting that has mostly the ground plane and the horizon is very high up. Like those are two very different ways of looking at even the same scene and how you position the camera means where you are putting the person that is looking at the landscape that you are painting. You are putting them in a role in this painting. Like for example, in my painting No Shoes from this point onward, I place the camera on this ledge before bridge and the name No Shoes from this point onward means that my world in my art is kind of a sacred place for me and all the kind of like ordinary common worries and criticisms can't reach me there because no matter what people say about my art, I have always my own walls that I can escape to and therefore my art is kind of untouchable <laughs> in that way because it's going to always be my safe haven. That's what that painting name means. And the placement of the camera and the viewer in that scene is kind of like setting up that story for the viewer. I know that this story doesn't convey this way to everybody, but it's important that I know what that painting is about. And I have this story figured out. The character in that painting is the viewer standing where you are standing when you are looking at that painting. That's why that was also printed to this huge scale. Like it was like bigger than this painting behind me when it was printed to this one art exhibition. And I had this very clear message what I wanted to say about it, because when I was painting that I was under a lot of work pressure and I felt like everybody is like just criticizing my art and I had a lot of trouble with a specific producer on a project that I was working on. And then I thought that like, this is work, but my art is my own and it follows my own rules and none of that 
kind of criticism can reach me there, because I will always have more places to escape to. And if you have seen my Black Spine video, I'm going to put a card here. <laughs> In that description I tell what that painting is about, and I would have felt weird writing that stuff in the video, because it's basically the process of painting that video, because I feel like for me, when I watch that video, that landscape speaks for me in a way that it's supposed to, and I don't much care that everybody doesn't get it. That's not the intention of this, but if you have a message and you put it in the landscape, people will feel that there is intent behind it. And a lot of people have commented on this. Of course there are people who just like look at my paintings and say like, oh he paints trees, moving on. But for some people they understand the symbolism and there are a lot of people who have given me comments on my landscape paintings where they specifically understand the specific stuff that the painting is about. So I'm always making that painting first of all for myself, but also for that person who is going to connect with it emotionally. It's not just for like general audience, because you can never paint for a general audience, because audience is nobody, but a, you, you are a person and you can paint for yourself and there you have like specific things that you know what they are a symbol of. That gives you a lot more like personal touch to your art when you are painting for yourself this way. And all of this is just trying to avoid the hard to say fact, which I am going to get to <laughs> right now. But I feel like I'm going to get such for saying this, but I, I honestly feel like this and I have looked at enough portfolios and job applications and student work to say this, that when you feel like the painter is just basically painting trees and mountains and you feel like they are just trying to impress you with technique and there is no story there, I can put myself in the scene, I don't see the character in the trees, there's no emotion. Whereas when there's no emotion and no mood, what do you have then? Like why even do that painting? And those are the pieces that I look at and then I completely just move on. And I don't think that's worth the effort of creating a painting, because painting is so hard, it takes so much work and it takes so much time and skill and love why wouldn't you use that time slot and that energy out of your life to say something meaningful and talk about your life in some way? You don't have to explain it or make these sort of personal names for paintings like I do, but I do think that it can give you so much more and it can feel so much more rewarding when you are doing a painting and it actually means something to you. And you, when you post it online, you don't have to be worried that everybody is not going to get it. Because you're not doing a storybook illustration for a children's book every time you're doing a landscape painting, but you are depicting something that is coming out of your life. So in a nutshell, the painting has to be about something. And I do think this is going to be a much more rewarding experience to you when you approach it this way. But if that is not enough motivation, and I understand that this can seem like very intimidating, it's also incredibly effective marketing tool. Because when people can relate to the emotion, at least on an emotional level when they see your painting, they're much more likely to share it or comment on it or interact with it in any way. But if it's just an image that is supposed to impress them, they're much more likely to just move on because we see impressive images all day long, but we don't see people talking about their own emotional life that often. Especially I feel like in digital art, so much of it is just based on what is commercial and what a client would like to buy. And let me just tell you that clients like to buy things that create emotional attachment. So that's my whole rant about backgrounds. You can like troll me all day long and call my paintings backgrounds, but I know what my paintings are about. And whenever I get those few comments when people like understand my paintings, it wasn't just about me, but it was about that other person too, who was going through something similar and used my painting to kind of process their own emotional life. Those are the people that my paintings are really for. It's not just for like general audience, it's for actual persons who have lives and feelings. 
So the next time you see a landscape painting and you think of it as a background painting, think again because language matters and the words that you use to describe art also limit the way that you think about your own art and the possibilities that it can offer to you. So use proper words when talking about landscape paintings and you will also enable yourself to be able to express more with just landscape paintings. Sorry about this whole rant, I didn't mean to come off as sounding super angry about this. I'm not angry, I'm just very passionate about this, because obviously I love painting landscapes and I want other people to enjoy the full richness of that emotion too, and not just like dismiss it as something as a background. Here's a landscape painting, it's a background of this talk. <laughs> I don't know what that means. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.